And that's a wrap on 2019, ladies and gentlemen. Gotta go and get a bag, cause that's just my move. And I know you've been trying. I've been playing all the games and niggas dying. Pussy so good, might as well just die. Welcome back to the channel everybody, it's your host with the most, Tomboy00, and you're currently watching Tomboy TV. And today we are here to get into my countdown of the best sneaker of 2019. Now this is starting from this, no, January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, 2019. 2019 was a big year, man. It was a lot of controversial, political, societal. This right here is the iPlane 1. It's a hydrogen powered uh, airplane. And Fashionable statements were made that were questionable, such as Virgil Abloh, with him quoting that street will will die within the next few years. Uh, how many hoodies and how many t-shirts can you own? Honestly, quite a lot if I really feel like it. You know, like, you know we're bringing back the FUBU right here. Only, only those OG people know what I'm talking about, FUBU in the house. Uh, but you know, 2019 was a very good year. On Like, going by the quarter-wise, the first quarter was decent, right? That's when we had a lot of like the Travis, the Tom Sachs, the Mars Yards, a lot of the good hype stuff. We had a few- That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Jordan ones in there as well. That was like beginning with the crimson tints. Then quarter two was like and eh, kind of slowed down. Quarter three was absolutely dead in my opinion. It wasn't much going on. Yeezy started picking up a lot. And then quarter four, it was like Nike and Adidas slash Yeezy came together and like we're killing everybody with oversaturated amount of sneakers. Like that they, they just came in quarter four, the fourth quarter, and they're like <laughs> hammering away every single week and was releases. I felt stressed out. I was like. There's two, there's a Nike and a Yeezy release on a Friday, Nike and Yeezy release on a Saturday. The next week, it's the same thing over and over again. I'm like, and then there's a Friday release, uh, Nike Off-White Dunks on Friday. And then before then, there were Yeezys Reflectives, Yeezy Non-Reflectives. A lot of, oh my, my eyes are mad at you right now. But there was a lot, a lot of stuff coming down to 19. And I'm not going to lie, like, I'd rather be busy than have nothing going down. But it was just, it was a lot. And I got to say, a lot of it was for heat. It was heat. It wasn't terrible. Like, Alien 700 V3s was the first Yeezy I actually gravitated towards would not pull the trigger on unless i got it for retail and even then i don't think i'd wear them on my feet just because not really my style as i always say it's not my style uh just because it's easy and it's a dad vibe sneaker and i don't really rock that many dad vibe sneakers out there i'm more of like a jordan one jordan three as always i just wear the same sneakers all the time i'm not really i don't really wear that much you know i'm a, I'm a full full flexor i'm that kid that puts shit on display like right there and just stares at it all year long. That's me. That's me. And I ain't going to front. That is me. So that's why we're going to head to my countdown of top 10 sneakers of 2019. And I'm excited to get into this one. I did look at a lot of other lists. Well, I kind of had my idea at the beginning of December. But now the idea has, now the list has changed a little bit just because the few releases that did happen in December. Like that's why I like to make this video at the last few days before this year ends. Because t December was a lot, a lot of releases. And some of those did make my list indeed. And I did look at Complex. I thought there was just not the greatest like shittiest like they put nike uh reacts the bb nike mag reacts and i was like y'all shitting me i mean i get it like they're trying to change it they're trying to change like the future of sneakers but that was a terrible addition in my opinion then they also had uh well they had the fours the bread fours and i was like eh, you know it is an iconic shoe but it's not thus the, i don't think it deserves to be on well okay I know I'm gonna get a lot of people mad with this one. I did put the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Jordan Summit threes though on my list last year, just because I love the threes. But this year the fours were like, yeah, you know they're dope and everything, but they just were not there. But price on those escalated on that one like crazy, which is why I'm gonna make my top uh, sneaker investments and supreme investments of 2019 the next two days. That's when the top investment videos will be out. I'll be talking about how to what to invest in right now to make the most profit. What I see going up for most. And of course, the estimated resale prediction. So without further talking, you guys know the deal though. Check out my social medias at Thomas Burke on Twitter and Instagram. Tomboy TV Plus for the premium Discord cook group on Instagram. Hype NJ for the, all the news and leaks. And of course, we got Tommy's Taylor or no, Shop Tomboy TV for the website and TomboyTV.com down below. So I'll move over right here. You guys know we got the swivelly chair out here that's half broken. Hopefully I get a new chair beginning of this year. But first up... Number 10 on my list is the Air Max 1 Susan Missing Link. Now, a lot of people might be like, yo, Tommy, what are you doing? And man, a lot of might have even forgot about this sneaker. Personally, I did. Until I looked at pa my past videos. I went through all my videos. I scrolled through all of them. I know there was like 400, like, nah, like, there was about like 300 videos done in this year. I try to post every day. Commended out here. Uh, and I was looking at it. I was like, yo, these Susan Links, first of all, I don't really go by hype. I mean, I do go by hype on this shoe, but also the story that I have to tell with it. 
This sneaker escaped my hands all the time. Like there was a restock two months later after release. I missed it out like that. It was fun though. You know, even if I take L's on sneakers, I still like to have a cool story to tell about how I attempted to get this sneaker or acquire the item. Uh, but we did end up having a, uh, what was this? A uh, review of these. Shout out to Harlem Reseller. We did have a review of these because he picked them up on Sneakers Pass. That was the last sneaker pass he actually ever hit in a very long time. Yo, <laughs> that was actually a decent sneaker. And it's just the colorway on this one also pops. It was like the beginning of this year where I really saw the transition of Nike starting to use different materials on one silhouette, different materials, and a lot of different like extra accessories on it. I think this was, I'm not going to say the start of the whole thing because they've done it before, of course. But like this is the first thing that I started noticing myself like, oh, they're using different materials on this one. They had suede, they had like the little, uh, the uh, same material that's used on like off-white Jordan 1s almost. And it was cool. Like, you know, Air Max 1 is always a great ass silhouette as well. It's a legendary. It's an OG one. And I just think the glory on it was on point as well. So that's why I put it at number 10. Next, we're going out to number 9. And I did have to put the Nike SB uh, Dunk Low Ray Guns up on this one. Just because it's bringing back the OG vibes once again. Like the Air Max 1 OG silhouette. Colorway, not so OG. This Nike SB is an OG silhouette. It's just Nike SB Dunk Low. Like not much has changed since it came out. But the colorway, once again, is the Ray Gun colorway. It has that. Uh, man, it's beautiful, man. It's a work of art. Now, I did put the black pair up here just because the white pair was too hard for me to edit. But the white pair was more limited. Personally, I would rock that one, I think, a little bit more. Just because black sneakers nowadays, like all black sneakers, first of all, have a negative connotation to them, especially with the black Air Force ones. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to pass on those. I'm not really much. In, not, like, especially like low top sneakers that are all black. Black, not it for me. But this one, the all white ones that were on it, they were limited, much more limited. They're gonna go much more higher in price, which is also why I'm saying this is one of the best investments of 2019 you can do in sneakers. Uh, that's just my opinion, but once again, we'll dive into the resale market in the next video. Right now, we're just keeping it for style and my list. So that's why Ray Guns are up here. The tie-dye collection is popping as well. I like how they did the color blocking on them. I really do appreciate it. Personally, I didn't touch a pair myself, even though I almost, not all the time, but like, a decent amount of time I do catch a W on SBs either by skate shops or online. This time I just wasn't prepared. I didn't prepare myself enough. But I did prepare the Discord though. We had a full blown site list, full blown first come first serve in store. Success was very good on that release, especially with Premier Skate Shop. <sighs> there was one guy in the group who cooked both colorways and one cart. Yo, heat. Anyway, so moving on, we have number eight on my list, which is the Jordan 1 LA to Chicago. SB, it is an SB again. The one that got away from me. This is my favorite Air Jordan 1 to come out. That's a non like high tier release. This is my favorite one. Came out at Skate Shops. We had the NYC to Paris that came out along with this one. Of course, I took a W on that from the Skate Shop. But when I entered LA to Chicago's, they dubbed me. They were like, no, sir, you did not get a call back. And I was like, damn, it really be your own. It really be your own sometimes. So we do have the iconic LA colorway on the sneaker. And it scratches off to the Chicago colorway. Now, when it scratched off, the color does not look that great. Because it's kind of washed in with the purple. It looks like a dark red and purple but it's just this is a journal one that i really really do wish i could have copped the colorways are magnificent the white the the gold and the purple just be hitting it on point and it's a journal ones you can never go wrong with them except maybe you can go wrong with them such as like the crimson tints for example i i despise those the uh the what was it the turtle not the turtle doves what am i saying i'm mixing up brands out here this the uh aqua green i'm gonna call them the aqua greens right now just because that's the colorway but i despise those as well but the la chicago's they really killed on this one just because the colorway and i love how they have the removable stuff i love when brands incorporate something else to do with this sneaker besides just wear it and look at it like oh you can see progressively over time it scratches off into a new shoe and you technically have two shoes in one that's like so basically this is number seven and oh wait eight and Set eight and eight and a half is the LA to Chicago's because it comes out into the Chicago pair. But next, we're gonna move on to number seven on my list, which is the one and only Adidas sneaker that didn't make it, which is the Adidas Easy 700 V3 as as I you as I use. So we're gonna kick it off with here. You guys can see uh, the reason why I put the blue on this graphic is because the bottom of this sneaker is that nice icy blue sole. I gotta say, the cage is popping. It's glow in the dark. Does incorporate a lot of cool features on the sneaker. Uh, the black, the tongue as well pops really nice. I think Kanye really outdid himself on this one. I think it's nice. It, it's This one opened up a new doors for a whole new sets of colorways, though. I do expect them to restock this exact colorway and silhouette eventually. Uh, will it be anytime soon? Probably not for another few months. But reason being is it's a V1 of the sneaker. It's the most hyped colorway of the sneaker. And, you know, he wants everyone to have Yeezy. So 2020, I do expect to be filled with a lot of Yeezy releases as well. But looking back on 2019, 
the past two months were ridiculous. We had turtle black, triple blacks. We had the uh, Yachils. We had the Yisrael's. We had Citrons release. We had Cloud Whites this year. We had the 500s, which I don't pay much attention to, or the th seven, uh, 700s. We had a lot of 700s coming out. 350s were off the charts. The best one, in my opinion, was, of course, the Triple Blacks, which did release twice, two separate times, and they're almost back at $400. I did say, hold, uh, uh. A short term hold though before they restock once again so i'm gonna say hold it for another few months but then it's time to dump that pair probably by summer i think is the best bet but easy 300 v3 700 azeals or definitely a number seven on my list they did not go below or under just because first of all i don't really like easy myself i just love the silhouette what i wear nah so that's why i put them up at the little bit at the top at the bottom of the list i should say but next up we are moving to number six which is the air jordan one and travis scott this is no brainer. Like it had to be on here. I honestly even forgot this release in 2019. I thought it came out in the end of 2018, but then I recalled it did come out in 2019, and that release was hectic, man. I remember that stinkers pass for that. <laughs> man, I was distraught over that. And then I remember, dude. That's why I like put, like this story because listen, I had the Discord right. We had the monitors popping up on the Discord. We had boom, 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 alerted everybody. Yo, Travis got on his site. Da da da. Right, I'm on it. <laughs> I'm in the car on the way to the post office, right? I'm sitting in traffic in the car. I'm three minutes too late on the notification. I add it to car. I'm waiting in queue. I pull over to the road. I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on. I wait like 10 minutes in queue. And after like, if you don't get through queue, like within the first few minutes, you know, it's a wrap. But I still had my last hope on it. Sold out. Boom. God, Stinkers Pass was an L. And then Stink this is the first time Stinkers Pass, I mean, Stinkers app also got shut down during release. This is when no one's payment was going through. No one was able to enter the thing. Then all of a sudden, I remember this exactly. I, th I think it dropped at 10 o'clock on the app. At 10.28, it ex the system was back up and started accepting everybody. And I also used to like first come, first serve. You, en you entered as soon as it opened, you're in. I gave up at 10.23, bro. And you're telling me five minutes later and it started accepting people? Bro, I was on the platform of the train and I, I kid you not, I yelled. I was like, what the shit? And I yelled. I yelled on the platform and I was on the way to the city to record the instant release. I kid you not, I was yelling like crazy on the platform. But you know, oh man, if you guys remember that video, that was, that was a good one. Uh, but next up, we keep it pushing to the clot collaboration, which is for the Air Force One Black Silk. Now, there's no question about it. 2019 was the year of Air Force Ones. Last year, I got to say 2018 was Jordan Ones. This year was Air Force Ones. Air Force Ones were killer. We had clots, multiple different colorways. You had what the NYCs, what to Chicago, what to LAs. We had Travis Scott. We had the black skeletons come out. We had the De the uh, Puerto Rican ones, De Los, not De Los Souls, that's SBs, but the uh, Puerto Rican ones. We had a lot of crazy. We had the snakeskin swoosh uh, ones that were heavily slept on, and you know a lot of them. A lot of them did come out. I'm trying to think. I'm feeling like I'm in oh cactus plant flea market. Like, look at this. We have three. Well, that the uh, CDG Supreme ones came out before, but the one I display, CPFM, Collector's Plan Flea Market, Travis Scott's Air Force One. It was the year of the Air Force One. And the black silks, I love, you know, first of all, like I said before, I love when stinkers, stinker companies incorporate another feature into the stinker. Like this one, you can scrape off the material and it reveals another stinker. So two in one. And this one was also the greatest investment if you bought when they were dropped down at like six, seven hundred dollars. Shot up to over a thousand dollars right now. And big sizes are mainly over a thousand dollars and the you know the prima cook group had these for backdoor available the price was high at a thousand but right now they're going for like twelve thirteen hundred and it was worth it to buy it at a thousand at the moment of course a lot of people didn't know it was gonna go this high but it is an all black sneaker it's a very popular brand in china and in asia it's clot right everyone loves clot and the fact that it it's like the it, it's overall just a great sneaker. I love it. Uh, it's a black Air Force One. Don't get me wrong. It is a black sneaker. I did talk shit about a black sneaker. But it does have that gum bottom, which I love. And it does have that white midsole. And, you know, you can scratch it off and make it black and red, which makes it a bread claw Air Force One, which I love. So that's number five. We're halfway through. And number four, we go on to the Nike and Off-White Dunk Lows. I did have to put this on here. It looks like a little bit of a hype BC thing to do. I think this is the only Off-White, yeah, it is the only Off-White sneaker on my list. We had the Air Force, I mean, the Air Max 90s released this year as well from the Off-White collection. And we had a few more like the Kigers, the Waffles, the, zo the Zooms. All passes for me besides the Air Max 90s, of course, and a few other ones. But the Dunks, I touched for retail. Sneakers pass, blessed me, the Michigan colorway. And the green one is still as getting elusive i'm hoping to catch a restock somewhere 
you know, in the city, they still have pairs available at certain locations at establishments. They're not releasing them just yet. Hopefully, during my break from school, I'll be able to catch one. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. But this is sort of number four. A, because I've just been longing this sneaker for so long. I've, I've been looking at it. A lot of stores had them early. We had the early in-hand review in October. So, two months before it actually came out, we had the early in-hand review. Ever since I saw it, I was like, I need this. I need this. I need this shoe. I need to have it. Is it only off-white? Maybe off, of course, off white has a role to play in it as well, but it's just a beautiful quality. The quality is not bad either, and it pays homage to the OG colorways of the Nike SBs. Like, for example, we had the Mission colorway already released before, SB Dunk mid version. We had the black and uh, the gray and red already came out, Nike SB version of uh, back in the day, and that pine green colorway already came out before as well. So, he version kind of bra brought back OG colorways, put his own twist on it, which a lot of people didn't appreciate with the extra laces. Myself, I don't like the extra laces, but you know, it is off of Nike, you know, you can't go wrong with them. So, it deserved number four on my list. And then we go on to number three, which is the Nike Sakai LD Waffle. I kind of also, like, the thing that put made me pr pressure me to put this on the list is also because everybody was talking about Sakai brand of the year, brand of the year. I'm not really buying that shit right now. I'm not really buying Sakai brand of the year. And don't get me wrong, they did great, but they really didn't do much to this sneaker. Now, a lot of brands, of course, they don't have a lot of freedom, quote-unquote, to say, when, like, going off, like, why Kanye left Nike. They don't have a lot of freedom with their collaborations because they tell them, yo, you have to work on this slow and all that. But they did combine. Like, they did change it up. They put the fat midsole on it. They put double swoosh, double tongue, double laces. I don't think Nike... I think Nike kind of had something against it for a second, but then they kind of just went, went along with it. It was innovative, don't get me wrong, but at first when I saw this, I thought this sneaker was disgusting. The Blazers... It's just a little bit of too much going on for me for the Blazers, and that's why I'm not putting them on the list. But the LD Waffles do deserve at least a place on the list somewhere. I did put them at the top just because the colorways they did a lot, and they're probably they're doing another black, triple white, and triple black colorway, as I mentioned in yesterday's video. I'm excited to see what else they can bring. Hopefully, they work on other silhouettes, but as of right now, it looks like they're gonna stick with the Blazers and the LD Waffles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to number two on my list which is the Nike SP Dunk Low Panda Pigeon. And I don't know why this wasn't on more people's lists. OG sneaker once again. It's classic, you know, staple. Jeff Staple out there killed it on this one. Panda Pigeons. We did the Pigeon because of New York. You know, it's New York company. It's based in New York. He's in New York all the time. He has a store in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that's where they're based out of. And, you know, it's just... I touched two pairs for retail and I still have them. They're almost a $500 sneaker. I told you guys to hold them as well. If you listen, you listen. Props to you. If not, then I'm sorry to tell you, but you missed out on a lot of potential profit. But it's not even about the profit for this one. I just love the color blocking. I love black and white. I know it's kind of basic and shit like that. But like too loud sneakers, like those Cactus Jack 4s are a little bit too loud for me. I can't pull them off on the daily. Like this is a shoe you can rock on the daily. You still have some sense of style. You still have some sense of notoriety notoriety with the shoe. And of course, I just love how it's New York with the pigeon on the back. The bottom of the sole has that newspaper print on it from when the release went crazy in New York. That's what caught a lot of demand and hype around. Like caught a lot of buzz around the sneaker with that crazy mayhem. That was like the first like big big massive mayhem around the entire lineup for the sneaker. So I gotta say I had to put it on this list. Great ass story with it. This was like the first uh, really SBs that I really, this like, you know, I'm not gonna lie. Like I didn't buy SBs much before this one. I had like a few pairs for myself as well. Like when I was younger, I wore SBs, but then I kind of stopped. I was like, yeah, not a fan of it. But these, like this was the first release. I started like, you know, by entering entries, trying to get for it online and all that good stuff. And we ended up luckily getting two pairs of them, which if you guys haven't seen my full sneaker collection, I recommend you guys checking them out. But ladies and gentlemen, number one on my list. Cactus Plant Flea Market Vapor Maxes. Hate me, love me, I don't care, but this definitely deserves to be up there on everybody's list. I mean, I'm not gonna say everybody because everybody is someone else, but Cactus Plant Flea Market is also the brand of the year, in my opinion. They came out with crazy collaborations. Their hoodies, which I still cannot get, even though we have crazy fast monitors. I cannot get the, the girls or the kind. Oh, I don't cry, some shit like that, man. I want that hoodie from Cactus Play Flea Market. I love their collaboration they do with Nike. First of all, Air Force Ones were killer. I would have put them on my list as well, but I don't want to put two stinkers from the same company on the list because that kind of just like repetitive. That was also Nike Nike by you, so it's kind of like dependent on you on what colorway you wanted to do. But these Vapor Maxes were stupid limited. I wish I could have touched. The Friends and Family pair was my favorite, though, with the light up. It was a light up. There were some flaws with it, I heard. That's just why I think they made it friends and family because they did have a lot of flaws. Like, you had to press a button. Sometimes one stinker didn't light up. One stinker did light up. And there was just a lot of issues with it. So that's why I think they kept it friends and family. 
But they killed the swoosh is beautiful looking, has like that 3D swoosh, the smiley face on the back to remind you, put a smile on your face every day, put some positivity out there, have a freaking fantastic ass day, great holiday, no, I'm kidding, I'm going, I'm getting, but dead ass, like, you know, I love that, I love the smiley face, the multicolor swoosh that goes from red to blue on the bottom, Vapor Max, I'm like, honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of Vapor Maxes. Like, if you guys caught me saying uh, maybe a year ago, I would say I hate Vapor Maxes. I'm still not the, like, this particular silhouette, the new version. I'm not a big fan of, like, the past versions. I love Air Max, Vapor Maxes. These, I'm like, eh, not the biggest fan of them. But the colorway killed it on this one. The shoe itself looks fabulous. I would love to wear it, you know. I would love to wear them with some, maybe some cargo, some track pants, something. But, you know, your boy missed out on this one. If I'm not mistaken, it's still going at around $1,000, especially in the bigger sizing. I call it an L. It was basically at a very few retailers of sneakers available, and it is what it is. But, you know, it's another L on my books. You know, I just love talking about this shoe because it really does look great. I'd love to wear it one day. Hopefully, you know, when your boy gets his money up, not my funny up. Get your money up, not your funny up. We'll buy the sneaker for the collection out here. But, you know, I don't pay resale, which is how it goes. So, I know that was long. I kind of did talk pretty fast. But hope you guys enjoyed this 2019 recap. My sneakers, my top 10 sneakers of the year. I like to make this list because it brings back good memories. You know, good memories on fun times. You know, that's why I love going to the city. Going in store, make friendships, make 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 connections make a lot of good stuff out there you know anyways hope you guys enjoyed let me know what's your top sneaker of the year i know i don't want to put top 10 because it's kind of long to put in the comments let me know what your top sneaker of the year is thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys on the next one 2020 is going to be a great year by the way make sure you subscribe for the how to cop gods and every sneaker. i'll catch you guys then